So we're going to do the uh, rear diaphragm telescope normal adjustment. Remember, normal adjustment just means that the objective and eyepiece lens are separated by the same distance as the sum of their focal lengths. All of the questions you ever get, the telescope's always going to be in normal adjustment. It sounds like it's something really weird or different, you know, for a telescope mode, they're always in normal adjustment. Um, but normal, normal adjustment means that the separation distance uh, between eyepiece and objective is sum of focal lengths. <coughs> Um, and, and that does crop up in questions, so they will um, assume that you know that in order to work stuff out. Yes, yeah, so the lenses are this far apart. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, that means it's a sum of the two focal lengths, and then that's going to stick in that as well. But that's all it means, really, in normal adjustments. And I put it in a particularly convoluted, wordy way. What I suggest you do, because... Uh, uh, it is on a piece of paper is to have the sort of rear diagram I'm, I'm going to do here and I'm going to write down here the points for the construction. I'm going to have to write the points down the right hand side but it's probably a lot easier for you if you do it under the rear diagram rather than trying to do it like me because it's going to make this quite small. Okay. And I'm now going to rub this out because I need the space. So, as ever, we will start with the principal axis, which is the line through the middle of all of the lenses. So there's the principal axis, and I'm going to put the two lenses on. And the telescope, the refracting telescope, has two lenses. There's the objective, which is closest to the object. Objective lens. And then there's also the eyepiece, which is over here, which is closest to the eye, eyepiece. Objective eyepiece, okay. Um, <clears throat> now then, because uh, they're in normal adjustment and the two focal lengths added together equal these two, that means the focal point of this lens is coincident at the same place as the focal length of this one. And I need to mark it on here somewhere. It doesn't matter really where it goes exactly, except that it has to be closer to the eyepiece lens. Remember, this has got a very short focal length, very, a very long focal length. So I'm randomly just going to put my, my focal points of the two lenses there. It just has to be closer to this one and further away from that one. But other than that, it doesn't matter. So what you've got really is the focal length of this lens, that'll be the focal length of the objective, and then, don't, add, don't draw this, I'm going to rub it out in a second, um, that's the focal length of the eyepiece, so that the distance apart of the two lenses is the sum of the two focal lengths, and it means that the focal point of that lens is at the same place as the focal point of that lens, it, it's coincident. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to... Rub that off because we'll do some calculations again with a diagram like this, but without all the rays on and stuff. So the first thing would be uh, uh, focal point of lenses closer to eyepiece. So I'll put it on. Then I'm going to add the rays. And, and I'm looking at an object which is a long way away. I mean, even looking at the moon is hundreds of thousands of kilometers away. It's a long way. As far as this is concerned, the object is actually at infinity. Okay? As far as the telescope's concerned. Don't draw this yet. So here is my object, but obviously it's a long, long way away. The rays, if you remember from what we did yesterday, are coming like that. And I'm going to draw some of the rays through the telescope. 
one of those rays, um, I know exactly where it's going to go through the telescope. If I draw a ray through the centre of this lens, then it will pass through without being refracted and carry on to this one here. So I'm going to add uh, one ray from uh, object through centre objective. And I'm missing out some of the adjectives in order to save time. You get the idea. So I'll now add the... So it's coming from the top of the object, passing through the centre of that lens without refracting, because it could go through the middle without bending. Ah, put that in. Now, like that. Oh. Okay, and I shall put a little number two. That one. Now then, the, the normal uh, thing you have to do with these ray diagrams is they want three rays. So you have to show the, the path of three rays through the telescope. And I've got one, I know where that goes. Um, I'm going to have to add in the other two rays from the top of the object. Um, this is where it gets a little bit weird. As I move this object further and further and further away, and look at what the rays are doing when they arrive at the telescope, because it's so far away, the rays are going to appear to arrive at this objective lens <coughs> parallel to each other. It's exactly the same rationale that we used for the diffraction grating. And we had, you know, ray off to the first maximum there, first order maximum, and they're all parallel. And yet, they're going to meet at a point on the screen and produce a dot. How could that happen? Well, this distance here is so much bigger than this distance here. I think on the scale of that and that, this is like a kilometre away or something crazy. Effectively, the rays are parallel to each other. They are converging at this point, but it's so far away. When I draw them like this, they appear parallel. And frankly, I can treat them as parallel because the, di the divergence of these things is utterly negligible. So similarly... The rays coming from the object, which might be 300,000 kilometers away, when I draw the rays arriving at the lens here, effectively they're parallel. So I'm adding two more rays parallel to that first one, but they're all coming from the same point <coughs> on the object. So we're happy with it. No one's missing. No one's missing. Any questions? So um, from same point. On object. <coughs> so two more rays, two more rays parallel the first one. Again, it's pretty lame, but you get the idea. And so I'll do a number three on there, and a number three on there. So that's, that's just like an odd thing, yeah? How can they be parallel coming from an object? Well, actually, it's so far away they appear, and frankly, we can treat them as parallel to each other. Now then, um, I need to know where these rays are going to go through here. Now, where those rays are going to converge is at the top, let's say the top of the image, if this is from the top of the object, they will meet at the top of the image. Where's that going to be? Um, well, <coughs> I can add the image onto this diagram now. If you remember, the further we move the object from the lens, I'm, I'm just forget about that one completely now, I've just got the lens with a focal point. I'm moving the object further and further away, and remember, as you move the object further and further away, the image gets closer and closer and closer to the focal point of that lens. Um, if you had a uh, your the camera on your phone, um, there, there's the phone there. The image would be formed, let's say, at this point here. That's where I put the CCD, just like a bit of paper when we had the lens looking at the window. That's where I put the CCD. So when you're looking at objects further away than this focal length here, which is very small, so frankly anything a meter away, 50 centimeters away, you can almost treat as infinity, all of the images will appear at the same point, which is where your CCD is. As you bring the object closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the lens, 
the image distance starts to move further and further away and the image becomes blurred. So there's a minimum distance you can take a photograph with any lens, with any camera. And, and for the, the, the mobile phones, be quite smart, I don't know, like less than 10 centimeters, you can't take a photograph that close because the image is beyond the CCD. So, because this object effectively is an infinity, the image will literally be formed at the focal point of this lens here. So I can add in the image, and I know this is coming from the top of the image, so I can add my image in like that. Yeah? Or, or add image at focal point. First ray. Okay, so because the object's a long, long way away, the image is going to be formed at the focal point. All these rays came from the top of the object, let's say, so that's going to go through the top of the image there. These are the two rays, because they come from the same point, have to go through the same point in the image. So now I can add the other rays in. They're going to go from here through that point, like that. And then from here through that point, like that. Okay. So, uh, five. Five, five, continue, two, raise, from, so can you continue two, raise, from objective, from objective, through, top, of, image. That's everything really from this lens here. So in a telescope, I could take the eyepiece away, I could get a bit of paper, and I could put it at this point here and see the image of the thing I was looking at. Admittedly, it would be baby small, okay? So I probably wouldn't see much at all because it would be tiny. Just like you, when you're looking through the lens at, at the room, you could see it, but it was all really quite small, yeah? What I want is to make this bigger. So now we're gonna get the eyepiece lens. And interestingly, um, just for a minute, you know, if, if we had a lens like this, and I put an object, a real object there, and said, well, you know, what would the light do from this point here? The light would be traveling in all directions. Um, we only normally do two rays. I'll do, I'll do one through the middle, which isn't refracted, and I'll do um, one there through the focal point. Uh, I've got to dive in, see, like, like, like that. Um, and then they would be formed with a virtual image back here. Okay? And then that would give me a magnified virtual image of this object. I could have done all the other rays from there. That means they'll come out. Nuffed it up. But they all come from the same point here, effectively. Um, that, and that would be back like that. Like that and a ray there would hit that. It would do that. So all the rays we should project them back here. Now then, what we've got here is an image from this lens, but the light is coming from it, the light rays are coming from it, in exactly the same way as if I'd placed a real object here and had light rays coming from that point, just like this here. Yeah, so I could, I could, I could rub that light ray out, I could rub that light ray out, and what I've got really are, are light rays appearing to come from a real object. So if you like, the image produced by this lens is the object of that lens. So this lens is going to treat that in exactly the same way as if I place an object at that point. Okay, And so what that will do then, it'll behave like a magnifying glass. So you know you had the paper and you brought it closer to the lens. Oh, it's got bigger. So I can magnify this image now. Um, the way we construct the rays, ordinarily, I have a ray going through the center of the lens because it isn't refractive. But clearly there isn't, a, there isn't a ray there. So I have to add a construction line to see where the right rays would go. These will be parallel 
to the construction lane because it's at the focal point. So this is the construction lane. So it's the path a ray would have taken if I'd placed a real object there through the centre of the lens. Uh, where are we? Six. Um, get rid of this guff. Six. So that's a construction line from top image through center eyepiece. And again, I'm missing off some of the information to make this a bit easier, so I'm quicker to get through. So what I'll do now is I will continue these rays through the lens, but they're going to be parallel to this one because the object is at the focal point of this lens. So that will be like that, and that, and that. Call that number seven, and that'll be it. Seven, so continue three rays from eyepiece parallel to construction line. Oops, the spell is. And then if you uh, look at the diagram on the handout you have, then that's exactly what you've got. Yeah, so I've got three areas coming in, passing through this point, hitting this, and running parallel to that construction line. So that's what you need to produce. It used to be about three marks, but I think it's only worth two marks now because the levels are harder. Um, but that's what you need to do. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. That uh, image is from where the objective 